In this video I will show you many different techniques how to move files on the Mac. Some of them are useful in different situations, so it's good to know more methods. Note that these are just kind of simple dragging moving methods. We will not use the copy command at all. Let's start off with the most straightforward way. This is to simply drag and drop between two windows. So here I have some files in the folder and I want to move them from one folder to another one. I can open new finder window from the dock or use the command and shortcut. And once I have them opened, I can put these windows side by side. All I need to do now is to just simply drag and drop from one window to another to move the files there. This is quite a long procedure. You can of course just take the folder and drag it to another folder. But let's say it's a little bit more complex. You want to take the file and drag it in the folder, in the subfolder of this folder. Well, for this purpose, we can use something called Spring Loading. Let me show you how it's done. I will drag this document here. I hover over this folder and wait for a bit. And then it will open up for me. Now I can see the contents inside. And I can drag and drop the file into another subfolder. The preferences for Spring Loading can be found in System Settings and they are under Accessibility. Here go to Pointer Control. You can set the speed here or turn it off completely. But you don't need to do that because there is a way how to simply speed up the whole process of moving files using your spacebar. So once more, I can drag file over the folder and as soon as I am over it I will press the spacebar and it will immediately jump into that folder. Spring loading is especially handy if you are in icon view, because there is no way how to view the contents of any folder without actually opening it. Let's move on to the next option. It's similar to the first one, but instead of having two windows open, you can use tabs. Let's open up new tab with command T. Well, there is another way without remembering the shortcut. Just close this and let's activate the tab bar. You can do it from the view menu on top. This option will add a tab bar in the finder window permanently, so you can just click on the plus button here and add a new tab anytime. I like to use the shortcut command T, but this bar doesn't take any space, so you can keep it in there. Now I have one window and two tabs. On each tab I can go to a different location. It can be projects, documents, downloads for the desktop, whatever. And once you have both of these tabs ready, take the file from one and drag it over the other tab. And wait, it uses spring loading for this as well. Now I want to show you some more creative ways how to move files. You can for example add folders to your favorites on the left in the finder. All you need to do is to take any folder and drag it over in there. One reason I would do that is to get quick access to a folder I use very often. You can do basically the same with the dock. Drag the folder to the right side of the dock and all the files from there will be easily accessible all the time. Now once I edit the folder to the finder sidebar or to the dock, I can take any file and drop it into that folder as well. There are other locations on the Mac where you can drop the files in order to move them, which most people don't even know about. Luckily, you have found the Apple Online Academy channel who will do everything for you. All you need to do is to just click the subscribe button and I will do all the hard work and bring you all these tips. But anyway, back to the topic now. And the next technique, I think the fifth one, can be used if you are very deep in the folder structure and you want to put a file few levels up. I can do that using the path bar. If you don't have it here in Finder, go to View menu and select Show Path Bar. And then you will see the full path down here. And what you can do with this is not to only go into that folder from the path, but you can also drag and drop any file into any of these folders to put it in one or more levels above the current folder. Now I have one more technique I want to show you. It's connected to the desktop. It might sound funny, but I think it's actually a very useful way how to move files. Notice how my desktop is nice and empty. 
I don't have any files or folders there. If you've got a nice clean desktop like this, you can use it as a temporary holding place. Because desktop is always accessible, it's always behind everything. So you can drag this file here temporarily, then navigate to another location and drag it to that place. It takes two steps, but you know clearly where you are putting the files and it's quite fast at the end. So look at this as another reason why you should keep the desktop clean. I have actually made a video about it, about some tips how to keep the desktop always this clean and organized. It should now pop up somewhere up here, so you can check it out after watching this video, because I have one more technique to show you now. And this one is a bit tricky. It works kind of one step back. Let me explain. You can take the file over the backwards and forwards button. That will put it into your previously used folder, respectively to the following one. For example, now you are in the project folder where you need to move the file from the downloads. You can click downloads folder here to open the folder. And I know that the previous folder was the project one, the place where I need to move this file. So I can just take it over the backwards arrow to navigate to the previous location and put a picture in there. I use this very rarely, but it's good to know that this option exists as well. Anyway, these were just a simple drag and dropping options. But if you would like to know how to, let's say, drag and copy, copy and paste, copy and move and any other techniques connected to the copy command, let me know about it in the comments below, because I think that wouldn't be a bad video to make how to summarize all of these copying options. But anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.